In the previous videos, we have learned we had learned about Boyle's law. So Boyle's law was the relation between uh, pressure as well as temperature volume, while we had the constant temperature and the amount of gas. So gas laws, as such, it's quite difficult to learn them individually, but I find that if you basically compare all the gas laws and remember the constant and the variable, it automatically makes things much easier to do. So I have a link uh, to a medium page of mine where I have the entire blog, just I mean entire blog post about gas laws and like I have a small basically a note sort of thing where it's just a tab tabular comparison between the various gas laws. So do check it out if you're interested. Now, this video we will be introducing or we will be talking about Charles Law. I am sure you have seen hot air balloons in real life or even if not in real life, I am sure you would have seen it in some or the other cartoon. I remember Mr. Bean having one. Uh, I also remember various cartoons like Doraemon and I don't know what you guys watch right now but yeah. So, I remember various cartoons having a hot air balloon. So, the hot air balloon's basic principle is the fact that you have a heating source, so the gas gets heated and so it gets expanded and so the the gas inside the balloon will get expanded and become light and it will carry the balloon up in the air. So you might be wondering, okay, what is the relation between these two? So actually the Charles law came up because of Charles, Jack, Jack Charles studying about hot air balloon technology or trying to improve hot air balloon technology. So he studied it in the year 1787 and he wanted to study the effect of temperature on volume and, and this was at a constant pressure and obviously constant amount of gas. The next one was by Gay Lussac. Gay Lussac again studied this further and he in, in the year 1802. Now what they noticed was they notice one very interesting thing happening okay so when the, when the temperature increased so when they increase the temperature they notice that the volume is also increasing so when temperature increases volume also increased then you know what's the next one that i'm going to say yes temperature when it decreases or when the when it's cooled down the volume decreases now you can observe this for example uh, if you have a balloon at home blow it up obviously and basically i mean leave it if you leave it outside you'll notice it stays the same i'm not talking about helium balloons i'm asking you to blow it and fill it with you know, you know whatever comes out and then place it in the refrigerator you will notice that the balloon slightly shrinks and this is because of the fact that when there is an increase in temperature the volume increases okay and assuming it's a very hot day outside fill the balloon to the maximum and then you see it will pop because the volume increased so much the balloon couldn't bear the pressure similarly temperature decreases refrigerator so for every one degree increase in temperature okay the volume also increased by 1 by 273.15 times volume at 0 degrees celsius so when there was an increase in temperature by 1 degree then the volume was increased by 1 by 273.15 times the volume at 0 degrees. You can't just say 1 by 273.15 times. Okay, You can't just say 1 by 273 times the volume. It has to be times the volume at 0 degrees Celsius because gases and temperature, these are very important. Okay, So temperature for gases will decide various properties. So you have to say 1 by 273.15 times the volume of the gas at 0 degrees Celsius. Now from this, let's assume we have two temperatures, okay, 0 degrees Celsius and T degrees Celsius. Okay, so at 0 degrees Celsius, volume was supposed to be V0 and for T degrees Celsius, volume is supposed to be Vt. And we know for every 1 degree increase in temperature, 
1 by 273.15 times in volume. I mean, volume increases by 1 by 273.15 times the volume at 0 degrees Celsius. So, based on this, they came up with the relation. So, according to that, the volume at a particular temperature T equals to the volume at 0 degrees plus T, that is the temperature, divided by 273.15 into V0. Because V0 is the volume at 0 degrees Celsius. 1 by 273.15 times the volume at 0 degrees. And T is because for every 1 degree, it is 1, 1 by 273. For T, it will be T times. So, this can be further written as V0 can be taken out in common to, sorry, 1 plus T, I am so sorry, um, yeah, so 1 plus T by 273.15. Now, obviously, you can, you know, I'm fractions, I'm assuming, so 273.15 plus T by 273.15. So, this is basically the introduction to Charles Law. So, we started with understanding that Charles Law was given by Jack Charles in the year 1787 and he was actually studying the hot air balloon technology at that time. So, the constant measures over here are pressure and the amount of gas and variables are going to be volume and temperature. So, they observed that when there is an increase in temperature, there is an increase in volume. And when there is a decrease in temperature, there is a decrease in volume. And for every 1 degree increase in temperature, the volume increased by 1 by 273.15 times the volume at 0 degrees. So, we are taking two conditions, 0 degrees and T degrees Celsius. And V0 is for 0 degrees, that is the volume. And Vt is the temperature at, sorry, volume at T degrees Celsius. So, based on this, Vt, the volume of that gas at Vt, that is the, you know, the, the temperature, that particular temperature is going to be V0 plus what is the volume? Because that so many times it has increased. So, for 1 degree, it increases 1 by 273.15. For T degrees, it will be T by 273.15 into V0. So, we are just simplifying that to get us this equation. In the next video, we will be talking, we will be continuing with the discussion about Charles' law. There, we will be talking about the absolute temperature. So, do check it out.